The end of the Second World War was met with riotous jubilation at victory over the Axis powers, and with the establishment of the United Nations, there was the dream of a new world order of freedom, prosperity, and peace. Even the advent of the atom bomb, the decisive weapon that ended the war, was celebrated, for it was believed it was so powerful it would render warfare obsolete. And yet, even before the guns fell silent, concerned whispers were being shared in the halls of power regarding the capitalist allies of the West and the communists in the East, who hitherto had been united against fascism. With there no longer being a common enemy to unite them, age-old rivalries and fears began to re-emerge. The Western allies of Britain, Canada, France, and America had not forgotten that the Soviet leader Stalin had worked with the Nazis to carve up Eastern Europe before Germany invaded Poland in 1939. They were also concerned about Stalin's refusal to surrender his grip on territories in Eastern Europe, which the Red Army had liberated, and his land grab in Asia during his last minute intervention in the Pacific Theater against Japan. Stalin himself, as paranoid as ever, was convinced that the Western Allies deliberately delayed the D-Day landings in order to bleed the Soviet Union of its people in an effort to weaken the vast country. The fact that American soldiers had fought in the Russian Civil War against the communists in 1919 only helped fuel his belief that after Napoleon and Hitler, the next leader to take a massive army into the Soviet Union would be American. With both America and the Soviet Union having suffered devastating surprise attacks in the war, they were both determined it would never happen again. They readied their armies to fight what would prove to be one of the most abstract conflicts in history, the Cold War. Welcome to Wars of the World. Vietnam was formerly known as French Indochina and was part of France's Far East possessions leading up to the Second World War, during which it was annexed by the Japanese. The Vietnamese formed resistance groups against the Japanese, the most prominent of which was the communist Viet Minh, headed by Ho Chi Minh. With the defeat of the Japanese, the Vietnamese believed that they could finally declare themselves a free and independent state, but the US supported France's ambition to reconquer the former colony. The Viet Minh fought a brutal guerrilla war against the French throughout the second half of the 1940s, the French relying heavily on American equipment in order to keep up their fight. In 1950, the Soviet Union and China recognized Viet Minh's Democratic Republic of Vietnam in the north of the country as an independent state, while in the south, France's allies recognized the city of Saigon as the pro-West capital of what would become simply the Republic of Vietnam. Fighting between the Viet Minh and the French continued until the bloody battle of Dien Bien Phu in 1954, where the French were dealt a humiliating defeat. A ceasefire was declared and the French withdrew, granting independence to neighboring Laos and Cambodia in the process, while Vietnam remained partitioned. After a brief period of relative peace, fighting broke out in the south between government forces and a peasant army known as the Viet Cong, which was soon supported by Ho Chi Minh's North Vietnam. Under President Kennedy and later President Lyndon Johnson, who succeeded him after he was assassinated, the US became increasingly involved in training and supporting the South Vietnamese, until in 1964, a US warship was allegedly attacked by North Vietnamese fast attack craft. In response, Johnson authorized a massive buildup of forces, including combat units that would fight directly with the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese Army. Over the next 11 years, the technologically superior US forces found themselves embroiled in a bitter guerrilla warfare with the communists. 
a massive air campaign known as Rolling Thunder, which was directed against North Vietnam and aimed to deny them the ability to carry on the war, was rendered ineffective by President Johnson imposing crippling rules on what the pilots could and could not do. This was intended to avoid killing Soviet advisors training the North Vietnamese, fearing it would create a situation like the Cuban Missile Crisis, but limited what US air power could achieve and cost hundreds of airmen their lives. On the ground, American troops were fighting in extremely dense terrain that was wholly alien to them against an enemy that had lived on the land for generations and had enormous combat experience by 1964 after fighting the Japanese and the French. With opposition to the war growing in the United States, morale and discipline among the US service personnel was low, especially among conscripts, many of whom were just barely out of school. Drug abuse and alcoholism ran rampant, while some American soldiers committed war crimes against civilians for the loss of their comrades. In 1968, Richard Nixon was elected president and vowed to get America out of Vietnam. He stopped conscripts being sent to the country and instead relied on volunteer troops training the South Vietnamese to take over the combat role, a process known as Vietnamization. On July 20th, 1969, the US achieved the ultimate goal in the space race by putting a man on the moon. However, at home, the Vietnam War was tearing US society apart. Many had already agreed that it was unwinnable. The question was how to withdraw and still save face. Nixon was, without a doubt, a hardliner when facing the communists. So it came as a shock when it was revealed in 1972, he would conduct a historic visit to China, taking advantage of the collapse of the relations between Beijing and Moscow. This visit is even more incredible when you consider American forces were still engaged in fighting North Vietnam that was supported by China. Nixon himself considered the week-long visit one of the most important in the world. While immediate results of the visit were limited, long-term it laid the groundwork for China becoming a major trading partner with the US, while further widening the rift between China and the Soviet Union, thus preventing them from combining their might against the West. Just a few weeks after this visit, the US and the Soviet Union signed the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty, the first of the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaties, aimed at reducing the threats nuclear weapons posed to the world. It would prove to be a year of renewed hope for peace, by one way or the other, and this included Vietnam, where Nixon had lifted almost all restrictions on US air power committed against the North. Operation Linebacker 2 saw massive air raids aimed at crushing the North's infrastructure and forcing them to the peace table. The operation seemed to succeed, with negotiators from both sides meeting in Paris and agreeing to a ceasefire on January 23rd, 1973. US forces began to withdraw, although contingents of air and naval forces would remain in case of renewed hostilities. However, it all proved to be a ploy by the North to allow the Americans to withdraw. In 1974, the North renewed its assault on the South, and despite threats that US forces would return en masse, the US began evacuating its own people and a number of civilians out of the South, which fell to the North on April 30th, 1975. The city of Saigon was named Ho Chi Minh City in honor of the Viet Minh's leader, who had passed away before the end. To the West, the authoritarian nature of Soviet rule, coupled with the relatively little information that came out to the world, convinced many that the people there were akin to robots, lacking any sense of individuality, and following instructions by the state without question. However, the reality was very different, and in fact, the 1970s saw growing unrest in Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union. Contraband items from the West, such as music, films, and even clothes, became highly sought after. People would meet to listen to music from groups like the Beatles in places similar to American speakeasies in the days of alcohol prohibition. 
Perhaps the most significant threat to Moscow's authority emerged in November 1975, when the crew of the Russian Navy frigate Storozhovoy mutinied in the hope of inspiring their comrades to join them. The mutineers were committed communists who believed their leadership was failing. During the mutiny, Soviet bomber crews were ordered to sink the ship, but they refused to kill their countrymen. Eventually, the captain of the frigate managed to regain his command before anyone was killed. The leader of the mutiny was put on trial and executed. Along with the US, the Soviets engaged in further talks aimed at more strategic arms limitations treaties, and in July of 1975, American astronauts and Soviet cosmonauts docked their craft in space and shook hands in a moving gesture towards peace. However, neither side was willing to give up their ambitions of being the dominant global power. In 1976, the Soviets and Cubans worked to install a communist government in Angola, but the Soviets' biggest gamble of the decade was invading Afghanistan on Christmas Day, 1979. 